that our three branches of government are subservient to the United States Congress, that we are governed by a federal statute, that we have been held to be no more powerful than a federal instrumentality, is something that people in Guam need to know, and that in moving forward, it is not enough to educate on the three options of political status. People need to understand that our current political status is unacceptable and it takes away power from the people who need to have it in our hands. And I mentioned the historical context and there's a danger in saying that the piecemeal government that we've been given is, is adequate. Um, our territorial status, which was uh, arrived at based on a $600 tariff on oranges, being shipped from Puerto Rico to New York. That's where unincorporated territory came from. And if you read the insular cases, they're all about tariffs, right? So the political status of people living in Puerto Rico, living on Guam, living in the Philippines, living later in the Virgin Islands, all of that was arrived at based on whether or not shippers should have to pay taxes. <laughs> we need to understand that, that, that the discrimination that the United States Congress allowed to do under the insular cases in Article 4 inhibits us today. If you look at GMH, and you look at Medicaid, Medicare, and the way that Congress can cap and explicitly discriminate against the territories, and the effect that it has on the government of Guam and the people who live here it is unacceptable, but again, it's something that most people are not aware of. There was a GAO report that was done, I believe, in 2004, at the request of Congresswoman Rodale as well as the delegates. And if you read through it, and you see that in a state of comparable socioeconomic status, they receive 12 times more in benefits per capita than the people of Guam do. And I believe that in talking about, uh, I actually will keep my conversation brief, but um, you know, when I, when I was talking to some friends about this, and I said, oh, my, my talk is called the fourth branch, and they said, oh, you mean the people of Guam? <laughs> and I kind of laughed, but I thought that was a perfect way to illustrate the way that power should be moving. Because colonialism is about power, and decolonization needs to be about power, and placing power in the right 